Hey guys, and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video, we're going to be looking at three pro tips to improve your airbrushing skills. Rough textures, speckly lines, loss of details. All these things can happen if you haven't quite got your airbrush technique dialed in. And these problems can happen to anyone, whether you're an experienced modeler or a new modeler just starting out. So grab your airbrush and get ready for these three tips that will elevate your painting to the next level. My first tip may seem ultra basic, and it kind of is, but it is the absolute foundation technique to getting a decent spray finish. What is it? Thin your paints. Now you're probably going to say, yeah, but LPJ, we already thin our paints. But chances are, you're not thinning them enough. There are hundreds of different types of model paints we can use on our builds. Some of them require thinning, a few of them don't require thinning, and some of them claim to not require thinning, but actually still need thinning. One of the main reasons we thin our paints is so the paint can lay down smoothly without obscuring any detail. And if your paint is too thick, you could end up with some of the problems I outlined in the intro. So let's get on with an example. Tamiya is a really popular model paint, for good reason. When it's thinned well, it sprays really nicely, and it's also quite durable. There is a really popular method of thinning Tamiya paint, and you've probably heard of it. Open the jar up and fill to the top with Tamiya thinner. Now this might be okay for functional paint work, but in my opinion, to get the most out of Tamiya paints, you need to thin them further. In this clip, I'm spraying Tamiya thinned at around the 60-40 paint ratio. 60% thinner, 40% paint. And this seems to go down fairly well. It's a fairly reasonable airbrush finish. With this thinning ratio, it sprays really nicely, but it could be improved upon. Next up, let's thin the paint further and see how we get on. A few drops of thinner, a little bit of stirring, and we're ready. You'll notice at the start of this test an over-enthusiastic squirt of paint. This can be avoided by starting the spray flow off the model or being a bit more gentle with your trigger. So it's taking the paint longer to build up to opacity, as you'd expect from a thinner paint, but it is atomizing a lot nicer. There's less of those fuzzy edges that you see on the transition between the two colors. That increased transparency in the paint can really be used to your benefit, and we'll discuss that later. Let's rewind a second and take a moment to look at Tamiya thinned to the top of the bottle. Now that's pretty grainy. Here's a comparison of each of those tests side by side. Thinnest paint on the left, thickest on the right. And this is a great example of how thinning your paint further can give you superior paint results. So next time you pick up your airbrush, have a play with your paint ratios, and you might just be surprised by the result. And speaking of ratios, this brings me to the final point of the first tip, that set paint ratios are a myth. There is no golden ratio for any paint. There are good starting points, of course, but even among the same brand, different ingredients and the variances in the pigments can make each color spray slightly differently. Whites and earth tones, for example, typically have pigments that are larger than greens and blues. So experiment with your ratios and always take the recommended ones with a pinch of salt. And pretty soon you'll be laying down ultra thin layers of paint for an extra smooth paint finish. Let's move on to tip number two. If you think you're close, you're probably not close enough. Proximity is so important when airbrushing detail work. Realistically, the closer you get, the crisper your lines will become. And those of you who've attempted mottling in the past have probably been in the situation where you've painted your models but also got specks all around them. Now this can usually be fixed by one of two things. Is your paint thin enough? And are you close enough? 
The real trick is to get nice and close, less than two centimeters. This is because the airbrush spray pattern works like a cone. The further away you get, the wider and more diffused the spray pattern becomes. And if you get in nice and close, it becomes tight and crisp. Now this isn't just limited to detail spraying. If you're spraying from a large distance, you run the risk of encountering other problems as well, like a dusty paint finish, paint layers not adhering properly to the layer below, a higher chance of orange peel, and poor results when spraying camouflage. This is why you'll see even when I'm painting a large area, I'm still fairly close to the model. As a rough guide for detail work, I'm around two centimeters or below away from the model when I'm spraying. For larger camouflage areas, I may go up to five centimeters or two inches away from the surface. But in my opinion, it's generally not a good idea to go any further than that, especially if you're working with water-based acrylics. Now it's time for tip number three. Apply your paints with precision. When airbrushing, it's best to build up the paint in a logical manner. It's so easy to get stuck in and start painting like you're filling in a colouring in book. But that's one easy way to start painting outside the lines. For best results in your airbrushing, try and apply your paint in a precise manner. When painting a large area, painting with straight overlapping strokes can really help to maintain a consistent and smooth finish. It can also help with maintaining the correct opacity if you're doing a technique like black basing or building up transparent layers over some interesting textural effects. To tie back in with the first tip, if your paints were under thinned, you wouldn't be able to pull off a technique like this. Now it might seem that the tips in this video are fairly basic, but I really think that being slightly self-critical not in a detrimental way, and polishing off the rough edges of your airbrush work can really help elevate your model to the next level. And that includes working on simple techniques like this, because if you haven't got the basics firmly down, you're gonna start struggling when it comes to more advanced techniques. So by improving your paint thinning, proximity of spraying, and your precision of spraying, you'll open yourself up to a world of new airbrush techniques to experiment with. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And I hope you've maybe learned something to help push your techniques to the next level. Before we go, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. You guys are awesome. Anyway, I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.